Welcome back to Archer's World of Literature, guys. Today we're going to be doing my December TBR video. As you may be aware, I'm still charging through Ulysses here. Um, I'm nearly at the end. I'm about on page 700 or so, so I'm, you know, what, probably about 80% or something through, 70%. Um, and so, yeah, this is a little bit earlier than, you know, a usual TBR video would be, but because I've sort of only been plowing through that for this month of October, um, sorry, November, um, I thought it would be good to start compiling what I'm going to read after that, which is probably going to be like late November, but it's going to bleed obviously into December for the majority. So I've got about, I've got eight books on this list, assuming that I can get through two a week, which is sort of my usual. Um, some of them are a little bit bigger though, so we're going to see how that goes. Um, so I'm going to go through those in a bit more detail in just a moment. So first up on the list we have Train Spotting by Irvine Welsh. This is a series, uh, a book series that I, I don't really know all that much about. Um, I just know that the you know there's a very successful movie, um, and it's sort of highly controversial. And I love sort of I love books like that. I really really don't know all that much about it. I really just loved these spines, and these covers, these funny covers. Um, all I really know about it is it's just about a group of Scottish friends who are just just a crazy group of friends. They just get up to. Uh, shenanigans, I suppose. Um, but there is, I think this is at four at the moment. I think it's a four book series and there is like a prequel book, I believe. Um, so I'm kind of going into this open, uh, not open-minded, but like completely unaware of what I'm getting, getting myself into, but that makes it all the more exciting. Um, I saw these on the shelves of my mate, Jaden, the street poet, um, in his, one of his bookshelf videos that he did with Jay, the author. Um, and I just, love he, uh, he had all of them and i love these covers so i had to order myself these i've actually got the rest of the train spotting books up there and one more irvine welsh book because i've heard he's an amazing writer although apparently he does write with a scottish accent so all his characters have and all his writing is with a scottish accent um but yeah that is train spotting by irvine welsh next up we have george rr R. martin a storm of swords part one steel and snow now i am aware storm of swords is one book um, but this edition that I have is counted as book three, and then Storm of Swords part two is counted as book four because they split them in half for these editions. Um, and while I would probably want to read it all together, I'm kind of glad they split it up because it is a big, it's a big boy. Um, and I, the reason I got this one specifically was because of these amazing covers and these numbers at the front, these sort of landscape pictures, they're beautiful. Um, so this picks up from where Clash of Kings ended, um, and if my memory holds correct, um, it ended with... Bran, Rickon, uh, Rickon, Osha, and Hodor fleeing Winterfell, um, and they're heading up north, I believe. And I think Jon Snow and the rest of the Night's Watch, they're still up north. Um, so there's a lot of, there was a lot of unanswered loose ends at the end of Clash of Kings, so I think this is going to um, hopefully answer some of those questions for me. Um, and I'm hoping it doesn't leave me on too much of a cliffhanger, because it's going to be a few more books until I get to part two. Um, but George R. R. Martin's writing never fails to, you know, grasp you. So there is a chance I might finish this and just go, I need to read the next one straight away. So if this TBR list does get interrupted by that, it's Mr. Martin's fault. Next up, we have Albert Camus, The Plague. As I've said many times on this channel, I've fallen in love with Albert Camus' writing, um, his his philosophies and what he he interprets life to be and death to be and... This is the next that I have to read in the order of his works. Um, and The Plague is sort of... I actually picked up a copy um, during, you know, what was happening in the world the last couple of years. I picked up a copy because the story of The Plague is oddly similar for a book that's written in, you know, I'm assuming the 50s or 60s. Um, it's oddly similar to what we were going through. Um, and so I actually picked it up then, but I didn't get to reading it Um and I, like I left that book at my old family home, so I didn't have a copy with me. So I just picked up this nice Penguin Modern Classics edition. Um, so this is uh, a, a township, um, and a virus comes through, a plague comes through, um, and basically it's about what I assume is doctors and people battling that, and you know, staying at home and all these things, and death and trying to battle this disease and things like that. Um, so there's probably gonna be a lot of parallels to yeah recent history. 
Um, so we're going to see if this is an upsetting read. You know, it might bring back some bad memories. Uh, but we will see Camus also, like Mr. Martin, never fails to grip me with his writing. Um, he's an incredible writer, so I cannot wait to get through The Plague. So following The Plague, uh, we have my first ever entry to The Realm of the Elderlings by Miss Robin Hobb, the queen of fantasy. We have Assassin's Apprentice. So this is book one of the Farseer trilogy, uh, following Fitz, and Fitz is a trained assassin, um, and he's using magic for the Farseer family. Um, and it says on here, allied to another political faction, is determined to discredit, even kill him. Fitz must survive, for he may be destined to save the kingdom. So this is her smallest book, I believe, or one of her smallest books. It's her first one. And then they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger with size. Um, but I have heard that her character work is superb. I've heard that her stories are brilliant, um, but particularly her character work is amazing. And I love character studies. I'm a big character guy, um, so I think I'm going to fly through this, even though, you know, it is pretty big, even though this is a small one, it's still pretty long, um, if you look at sort of the actual word count and the, the word size and stuff, it's still pretty long, um, but I think I'm going to fly through this in love with these Harper Voyager covers, like, they've got these beautiful gold, like, gold indents and sort of, like, blood stains and dirt on them, and I love them, so as a result, you might be able to see over here... I do have the rest of the Farsia Trilogy and the Live Ship Traders, um, and I was influenced to pick those up thanks to Mike's book reviews because he's currently going through the Ship of Magic and Ship of Destiny, the Live Ship Traders, and I was just like, I need to jump on this um, while it's still there because he's going to be doing a panel and they're going to be talking about those books and stuff, and I wanted to sort of follow along with that. So, Assassin's Apprentice, Robin Hobb. And then we have, I know this was on one of my TBR videos for November, on my TikTok, but I didn't get to it because Ulysses sort of charged into my life, uh, so to speak. But we have William S. Burroughs' Naked Lunch. Um, as I really love Jack Kerouac's writing, um, I really wanted to keep going with other members of the Beat Generation. Um, and so, yeah, Naked Lunch apparently is just a, like, feels like an acid trip or something like that. Apparently, um, it's just about, like, drugs and seeing aliens and all this. That's all I really know about it, really. Um, uh, again, my mate Jaden is just, he just said it's like a really, really weird book, and you can kind of tell, I said this in another video, but the pink on green kind of just screams psychedelic, right? So that's all I know about Naked Lunch, but it looks like a pretty short read. We'll see how long I get through it, though, because if it's going to be uh, like I've heard, it will be different. So that's Naked Lunch. Next up, we have a play that I hadn't heard of before until I met up with R.C. Walden and he was telling me about it and we actually ended up bouncing off uh, doing the play together and we were reading it together. And it just sounded really, really funny. Um, I don't usually read many modern plays. I mainly read sort of Greek tragedies and comedies. Uh, but this is Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. Um, now this follows these two characters who are just sitting underneath a tree and they're waiting for this third friend to arrive, right? And the entire time that they're sitting there, they're having these little conversations, and then every sort of five seconds, they're like, oh, what are we doing here, actually? And then they go, oh, we're waiting for Godot. And they go, oh, you know, that's what we're doing here. And they come to the realization. And that's, you know, about 85 pages of this, this play um, is just that. But apparently there is some pretty, like, humoric uh, dialogue on, you know, who Godot actually is, because, spoiler alert, uh, he never shows up. So that's going to be, I feel like it's going to be a funny read. That's going to be um, plays you can kind of treat lighthearted and you can sort of just take your time with them. So I feel like that's going to be a really fun sort of palate cleanser in between. My next one, uh, which is another big fantasy boy. So, and that big fantasy boy is, again, Miss Robin Hobb, Royal Assassin. So this is book two of the Farsia trilogy. Uh, I sort of just wanted to put a couple of palette cleansers in between uh, this. And as it is a trilogy, I'm thinking of reading them quite close together. Um, when it comes to big, long series like Wheel of Time or Song of Ice and Fire, I put a bit more time in between each book. Um, but when it comes to trilogies, I really feel like to get the full story, you have to smash, uh, smash them out. So even though I'm not reading them back to back, um, you know, I'm probably going to be reading them within a month and a half or so, you know, the entire trilogy. Uh, now this one is notice notably bigger than Assassin's Apprentice. But because I've heard her her character work and her writing, her actual writing style is so so amazing. 
um, I, I do feel like I'm going to be able to be, pre be pretty excited after Assassin's Apprentice to just jump straight into Royal Assassin here. Um, I'm very, very excited to see what she can do um, because, you know, I've heard quite a lot. And from what I've heard of her writing style and of her character work in particular, I do feel like she's going to be a writer for me. My second last book for my December TBR. Now, my final book on this TBR list is something I read every year at Christmas time, and you're all going to be knowing exactly what that is, um, and that is Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Now, I don't have a copy with me. Again, family home, um, didn't get a chance to grab it. So I'm going to be picking up this cloth-bound edition, the, the Penguin cloth-bound edition of A Christmas Carol because it is actually listed under A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Writings. So I actually wasn't aware that Charles Dickens had other Christmas writings. I'm not sure if they're poems or they're short stories. Um, but yeah, A Christmas Carol is a really beautiful story to me um, and very dear to me because I, I personally really enjoy Christmas. Um, I really love getting into the spirit of Christmas, and I feel like A Christmas Carol, if you haven't read it, if you know, you've probably seen the movie if you haven't read it, but one of the many adaptations of it, but it is just such a beautiful story of redemption um, and coming to realize the joy of family around Christmas time, um, and it's just a really beautiful tale, so you know, you see Ebenezer Scrooge, and he hates Christmas, and then he slowly learns, um, you know, that Christmas actually is important, even if you don't like this or that. Um, it can bring you closer to family and friends and just make you a happy person. So if if Royal Assassin here gets interchanged with A Christmas Carol and other Christmas writings, sort of if those two sort of swap around or whatever, there is a chance that ha might happen depending on, um, you know, because I do want to make sure I get A Christmas Carol read a couple of days before Christmas. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been a really fun video for me to make. Uh, I do like doing my TBRs, TBRs one at a time. Um, cause I, you know, I'm a bit of a fast reader, so I do find it fun to sort of look forward to what's coming next. Right. Um, so in the comments, get down there, let me know what you're reading in December. Let me know what you're currently reading. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these, if you think I'm going to like them, uh, your thoughts on any of these books. Um, and I will chat to you there. Um, and as I always like to say, keep reading, peace out.